So thank you again for joining us, everyone. This is cybersecurity. Um, so like I said, um, this is the room talking about cybersecurity for Majors Night. Um, so joining us today, we have David Hosa. He's a faculty member in cyber. Uh, we have Miranda Greer Spratley and Andrew Santa Cecilia. They're IST diplomats in the college, so they can answer questions. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, we also have Rajiv Damala and Kira Levitt. They're representing Hack PSU. They're here to answer any questions um, about this club. And um, like I said, I'm an advisor. So please put questions in the chat if you have any. Um, we'd be happy to answer them. And that is going to be it for my introduction. And then I'm going to turn it over to Professor Hosa to talk to you about cyber. OK. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Let me get my screen share going. And thanks, Rebecca. Appreciate it. Yeah. So can you see my screen OK? Yep. OK. So uh, so yeah, my name is David Hosa. I'm a uh, faculty member here in the College of IST. I teach primarily in cybersecurity um, and a little bit in the SRA major, and also teach a blockchain class now and then. Um, so. Um, let me just discuss uh, a little bit about the major. So the uh, core uh, cyber courses are listed here. And what we'll do is we'll talk about each one and, and what you can expect in these different courses. So Cyber 100 is our, think of it as our intro to, uh, to the cyber major. Um, you'll get a understanding of computers from a you know hardware perspective, from a software perspective. We'll talk a little bit about history. Like I said in the last session, we have we always have a, a mix of students that 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 are in class. Some are very uh, knowledgeable about computer systems. They built their own computer systems, and some are just you know starting out. So, so this course is kind of level set everybody. Uh, we talk about um, operating systems. Uh, we 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 do hands-on labs with Linux. The Linux operating system, understanding that and from a cyber perspective, is really important. Not to say that Windows isn't, but a lot of the um, the large workloads out there today are running on Linux uh, Linux platforms. So we spend a lot of time throughout the major working on on Linux and and understanding that. Um, and the thing I like about it too is uh, I didn't mention, but prior to coming here to teach in 2017, uh, I spent 30 years in, in industry and uh, a lot of that time I was working on Unix and Linux um, and uh, before I got into cybersecurity. So, um, so I have a lot of background and I like to talk about it. So anyway, um, we talk about the future of computing. And like I said, we do a lot of hands-on type exercises. And then cyber defense, which I teach um, usually every semester now, we do, um, this is a studio course. And when we say studio, what we're really referring to is that we spend the majority of the time doing hands-on uh, lab type of assignments. So we do have some level of theory in the course and we have some level of you know lecture. But most of what we do is, is working on labs, um, you know, anywhere from we start off with, um, you know, host-based protection lab um, and firewalling going all the way to doing things like buffer overflows. So uh, we cover a lot of ground in this course. Um, we use intrusion detection systems um, like Wazoo, we, uh, we will get into Splunk this semester. So we do a lot of contemporary tools, but we also do some level of programming with Python so that we can kind of get, go behind the scenes and, and figure out how to parse log files and how, to, how things actually work. Um, so studio courses, like I said, we do a lot of hands-on work. Here's just a few screenshot examples of how we accomplish that and learn by doing um, type of thing. Uh, the next course I wanted to talk about cyber analytics. So cyber analytics is just that um, there's a lot of analytics actually involved in cybersecurity because we're capturing tons and tons of log data. We're logging, you know, what we want to do is we want to log everything. We want to log it so that we can, um, 
we can create visualizations and we can understand if we're being attacked or we can go back after the fact, maybe after an attack or during an attack. And we can run some quote forensics on the data and figure out where the attack's coming from, um, how did they get in, uh, where are they from, how can we stop this attack? Okay, so this course uh, allows us to, to really apply an analytical approach using machine learning and uh, some, you know, like I said, uh, some programming like Python and R to, to create not only the analytics, but do a lot of that analysis. Malware analytics. This is a pretty uh, technical uh, technical course when it comes to from a programming standpoint. So uh, what's involved in this course is reverse engineering or kind of taking apart malware, um, going behind the curtain. So we'll use static malware and dynamic malware analysis. We'll use uh, tools like Ghidra, which you see on the screen. Ghidra was a was a tool was a kind of a, a tool that the NSA was using for years, um, and then they finally released it to the public um, uh, about two years ago. So that's also used in class for doing malware analysis. Um, and then 340W is incident handling. Um, very right, the W means write intensive, writing intensive. So uh, this is gonna prepare you to respond to incidents and how to write up reports when you get out into industry or into government. Then the capstone course is obviously your, your kind of your final challenge, your final project. So you're going to be given a huge amount of data. You're going to have to parse through it, uh, look at advanced persistent threats, uh, use different tools that you have used throughout your, your kind of cyber uh, courses that led up to this point. And then you're going to have to finally, after you do all the technical stuff, you're going to have to communicate that to the top level executives, just like you would uh, if you were in the real world. So uh, that's your capstone course. Um, so what are the differences? And this is kind of an older slide. I don't know that we have anybody left in the old ICS option, but but the, the previous cyber degree was called the SRA ICS option. And you can see on this page, the differences between the, the kind of the careers uh, coming out of both those fields. So on the ICS side, it's not as technical on the cyber side, you can see you're going to do, um, you know, things like penetration testing, security software development, possibly security engineering, forensics analysis. So, so the cyber degree is going to prepare you for a slightly more technical uh, career. Um, doesn't mean you have to go that route. You still have a good base in, you know, security and risk analysis, but it, you have the option to go in a more technical uh, route. Um, and then finally, um, why did that one come up again? I'm not sure why the slide deck is skipping. Anyway, um, okay, so let's talk about the custom focuses. That's where we should have gone. So within the major, you have to pick a focus. Um, the current focus, you have to pick an application focus. So these are the four focus areas. Um, and with each one of these focus areas, you've got um, some courses, you know, you've got your kind of courses laid out. So you have to take 12 credits in each one of these areas and six of them have to be from the 400 level. So if you're interested more in the political landscape that, you know, um, uh, terrorism or things like that, you may want to go with a geopolitical focus. Uh, if you're interested in more of a career in business, then the economics focus, focus would be good. Law and policy. So if you're more interested in, say, a government role, uh, law and policy would be good. And then finally, you know, one of the biggest industries we have going now is healthcare. So healthcare would be a, an excellent choice for your focus. Now, you can also do a custom focus or an alternate option. So you would consult with your advisor and a cyber teaching faculty member if you had another focus in mind. Okay, so. Say you had a focus and you wanted to focus on uh, engineering, a specific type of engineering. Um, uh, you could you could possibly put a plan together with your uh, with your advisor for that. Um, there's another option now, and I believe it's going to become official, is a um, application development option, uh, because a lot of students wanted to get more do more programming. So 
application development, I believe is going to become like a fifth option um, that you, you won't even have to customize. I, when I was in the coordinator role, I had quite a few students who I signed off on doing a, um, a programming or an application programming uh, focus. Uh, then finally, just a heads up that, you know, we are an NSA center uh, or a CAE, a Center for Academic Excellence in Cybersecurity. It's a picture here of uh, Professor Hills. He's uh, kind of oversees that program. So this is a, a certification that we have from the NSA and the Department of Homeland Security to, to uh, teach uh, to a certain level. Uh, these are the CAE core courses and the majors that are allowed to fit under that umbrella. And then finally, any questions? I tried to wrap it up a little quick, quicker that time. Let me just look at the chat. Rebecca, have you seen any questions come in? Yeah, we just had a question, which some of the students are typing in their answers. Is, um, someone asked about the current, what the current students in this chat or in this group are doing for their focus. So does anyone want to like speak to the focus that they're doing and like, yeah, if anybody it? wants to speak up uh, about their focus. Uh, yeah, sure. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, Andrew. Okay, great. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Santa Cecilia. I'm a junior in cybersecurity and I'm doing a custom focus in software development. And I worked with, um, Dr. Pega and she was a great resource with, uh, creating that focus. And it just made sense after my sophomore year, uh, taking a lot of the Java courses that I had. I also had um, Professor Jose who's in the chat now talking, um, one of my SRA classes uh, last semester. I had a great time there. And we did a lot of hands-on labs with like Kali Linux and stuff. So the IST uh, faculty will help you creating your custom focus, just um, work with them. And uh, once you don't worry about it, because after your freshman year, you'll have a good idea, I think, oh, like where, where your head's at with what you want to do. And definitely consider the custom focus. It's a pretty cool option. I would definitely recommend it. Anyone else want to share? Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention is, and I forgot to do it in the last session, but a lot of students ask about sort of getting certified, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, CompTIA Security Plus. So we have a club, uh, students have a club, the CompTIA Certification Club. Um, which uh, is getting a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, getting, getting to be quite popular. And then uh, I know we have Hack PSU folks on. They're going to talk about that. There's also some, um, some cyber clubs as well for hacking. You know, for CTFs, they go to CTFs and the collegiate competitive cyber clubs and things like that. So I will jump in real quick. Um... I actually was a member of the certification club. It's definitely helpful now that I'm st uh, starting to study for my CompTIA Security Plus certification. So if you do or are you if you are interested in certifications in the future, I would definitely recommend that club. Cool. We, we can talk about Hack PSU now too, Regina, sure. if you want to share the screen really quick. Like, can you see the screen or? Yeah, yeah. you're good. You can okay. Um, okay, so what is Hack, hack PSU is a 48 hour hackathon where you can discover your ability to create um, developing technology, solve real world problems and work with industry leaders. And um, each year over hundred plus universities and 900 students come to Penn State to participate in this hackathon. Um, now on the right is a Tesla coil. That's something that was created there and it oscillates based on the um, the frequency of music that's being played. And Kira is gonna go into more of the technical aspects. Yeah, so during the event, we've got the tech track, which is where you would be doing the competition challenges that are presented by sponsors and also by Hack PSU itself. And as a little brain break from those, we have workshops held throughout the event. And they're pretty much all day on Saturday. They of free for students, free for the hackers to come in and see anything. We have topics this year ranging from um, VR and AR to game development, software development, machine learning, and then cybersecurity specific ones like incident response and um, SRA. 
But in addition to this year, we have a hack PSU CTF, which is going to be a big part of Friday where it'll be going for four hours. And it's a great experience to see um, cybersecurity topics and things that are relevant to what you're learning in class and get some more hands on experience in applying what you're learning to a relevant cybersecurity thing. It's a great resume builder and it's, I find pretty fun to do and it's made by students for students. So um, it has a wide range of topics from Wireshark to crypto come cryptography to um, hashing, anything you can think of, Linux, uh, web, web application vulnerabilities. So it's a great exposure, even if you don't know what you're doing, it's free to join it. So you can join it and see what the questions are like and it'll give you a little preview of um, what other CTFs are. Um, and so, yeah, the workshops are just a lot of fun way to learn about technology. Oh, and then these are just some of like the sponsors that we have. So that, that's it. Yeah. Thank you guys. Um, so we're pretty much at time again already. This is flying by. Um, thanks for coming.